Today, we're diving into the heart of the Bible. Jesus revealed his divine identity even before the creation of the world and shared with us various mysteries, including events that took place before the formation of the world. This revelation is found in the book of John, specifically in the most impactful prayer ever uttered by the most extraordinary person to walk the earth, Jesus' prayer recorded in John 17. This is one of the most crucial chapters in the entire Bible. Through it, we can feel the beats of Jesus' loving heart as he communicates with his heavenly Father. Although the Bible is filled with powerful prayers, such as those of Solomon, Abraham, and Moses, Jesus' prayer is undoubtedly the grandest of all. In it, Jesus speaks about the glory and majesty he shared with God the Father before the existence of the world, as detailed in John 17 verses 1 to 5. When Jesus uttered these words, he lifted his eyes to heaven in prayer and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Just as you have given him authority over all humanity so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth, completing the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world existed. Before the creation of the earth, God already existed, sharing his majesty with his Son, as recorded in the book of Genesis. Genesis contains numerous beginnings, including the creation of man and other creatures. However, God has no beginning, he was present from the beginning of the Bible when the universe was created. Before the existence of our universe, something or someone eternal had to exist. The Bible makes it clear that this person is God. Scriptures show us this in various passages, teaching us that God is uncreated and eternal in his being, meaning he has always existed and will always exist. In Genesis 1, the singular term, he is replaced by the plurals Elohim, which means three or more gods. Thus, the first sentence of the Bible in Genesis uses a plural noun with a singular verb. Some might argue that this is grammatically incorrect, but theologically correct, suggesting that God is three in one. Genuine prayer often reveals the inner self of a person, and John 17 is a unique opportunity to understand the nature of Jesus' heart. In this prayer, Jesus addresses many themes developed throughout the Gospel, such as glory, glorification, sending, belief, the world, and love. Jesus asks to be glorified, saying, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you. Before this moment, the hour of Jesus' glorification had not yet arrived. Jesus prays first for himself, but his petition is not selfish. His concern for himself is, in fact, a concern for the Father. The Son can only glorify the Father if the Father first answers the Son's prayer to glorify your Son. Jesus did not wait until the work on the cross to glorify God the Father. His entire life on earth was a glorification, passing through his silent years of obedience in Nazareth, glorifying himself through his faith, obedience, and work during his earthly ministry. Every sermon preached, every blind or sick person healed, every instruction and training for disciples, every confrontation with corrupt religious leaders, every question answered, and every loving touch glorified God the Father. So, we read, I have finished the work. Jesus, with divine confidence and certainty, saw the work on the cross as already completed and asked the Father to glorify him with the same glory the Father possesses. His prayer was not one of independence, but of total and continuous dependence on God the Father. Jesus speaks about the glory and majesty he shared with God the Father before the existence of the world. He was aware of his pre-existence and its nature, knowing that there was a shared glory between God the Son and God the Father in past eternity. Jesus could not have made this prayer honestly or coherently if he were not God himself in unity with God the Father, as indicated in Isaiah 42 verse 8, where Yahweh declares that he does not share his glory with anyone. Jesus' prayer is a plea for the Father to receive him back in the glory for which he requested to fulfill his mission. This petition for a return to his original glory makes his pre-existence and equality with the Father clear, corroborating his statement that he and the Father are one, as recorded in John 10 verse 3. The Gospel of John emphasizes the glory of Jesus throughout its narrative. Jesus' vision in Revelation, recorded by John, highlights his divine form and how he was. 
John describes a powerful and incomparable scene with Jesus dressed as the Son of Man, wearing a robe down to his feet and a golden sash around his chest. John describes Jesus' powerful voice as the sound of a trumpet, identifying him as the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last at the beginning and the end of everything. Jesus, by identifying himself with these names in Revelation 1 verse 18, clearly declares himself as God. John describes the vision of Jesus in his divine form in Revelation, emphasizing his majesty and glory. This description includes his eyes like flames of fire, his feet like polished bronze, and his powerful voice like the sound of many waters. The angelic features present in John's vision of Jesus do not place him on the same level as angels but highlight his immense greatness. In summary, Jesus' prayer in John chapter 17 and his vision in Revelation highlight his divine identity, his pre-existence, his equality with God the Father, his incomparable glory, and his eternal victory over death. These accounts reveal the majestic and eternal nature of Jesus, inviting us to recognize his sovereignty and offer him worship. We've reached the end of the video, and if you enjoyed it as much as I did, I invite you to share it with people you believe can benefit from it, just like you and I seek the truth in the scriptures. This truth that sets us free. Together, we can delve into the wonderful and mysterious world of the Bible and be a light for those in darkness. Remember that we share insightful videos regularly. If you haven't joined our wonderful community yet, I invite you to subscribe and activate the bell so you stay updated on the thought-provoking content we share. Bless us with a wonderful like if you enjoyed this video. Additionally, feel free to share your thoughts on this narrative with respect and education, honoring the opinions of others. Your contribution is significant to all of us, as together, we enrich the narrative, seeking the truth and journeying together in the Word of God. May God bless you, and until next time.